Assalamu alaikum. How will be with you? Very good. Until the earth begins to quake beneath our feet again. <laughs> Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen ar Rahmanin ar Rahim Maliki Yumadeen. Iyaka na'abudu wa hiyaka nasta'in. Ihdinna in sirata la mustaqim. Sirata al-ladhina anna amta alayhim. Ghayr al-makdulbi alayhim. Wadar dalim. I have recited the most oft-repeated prayer of the Muslims throughout the world. It is composed of seven verses and these seven verses are repeated by every Muslim throughout their daily prayers at least 32 or more times. Why is it numbered as number one chapter or surah of the Holy Quran which in reality is not considered a chapter but it is considered to be the very essence of the entire revelation of the Holy Quran. Because by the recital and the repetition of these ayats or these verses, we make our contact prayer. We have our direct contact with no mediators. We did not say, in the name of Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Is that right? That's right. We did not say, in the name of Ibrahim, That's right. the father of Ismail and Isaac, did we? That's right. We do not say, in the name of Moses and his brother Aaron. And we did not say, in the name of Jesus son of Mary, but we said something that brings you in direct contact with the God himself, and that is a lesson. That lesson has not been learned yet, and so we suffer to this day the rebuke of Almighty God Allah, because we have taken the prophets and the messengers and the priests and the ministers as idols of worship. And this is an affront to Almighty God Allah Himself. So the lesson that is put in the form of a prayer in the opening chapter of the Holy Quran signifies that one day we will come to the end of worshiping the flesh and blood images of one another and putting them on a pedestal that only has a transitory life, a transitory existence. How many times has Minister Louis Farrakhan come before our people and spoken against this kind of adoration or idol worship. Why? Because the lives of the prophets and the lives of the messengers and the lives of the servants of God who come before us are yet under the subjugation and the dominion of the same God that they are guiding us to worship and obey. Is that right? Yes, so they become a trial for the people. And we present problems and problems to our servants whom God has raised to take us into a new world of righteousness and peace. Look what happened in the history of Moses and the history of Aaron according to the Bible. Because of the rebelliousness of the people of Israel who have been granted such a mercy and a blessing from Almighty God Allah. He became angry with them at the waters of Meribah. Is that right? And in his getting angry with the people, he left out 
the name of God. Is that right? So the Holy Quran comes to cleanse us of these impurities and of these mistakes and of these errors if we would but listen and obey. Over every single surah of the Holy Quran, after the opening, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the Fatiha, the Mitta, the key that opens your mind and your spirit directly to God. You have Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim over every single chapter of the Holy Quran. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, that the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is actually a prayer that begins in Surah 1 and continues through 114 with the exception of one Surah, Surah 9. And Surah 9 is called the chapter of the hypocrites. Now, Counting from Surah 9, we find what they call, the scholars call, the missing Bismillah, the missing prayer. The hypocrites miss their prayers, is that right? And the hypocrites miss the divine guidance of Almighty God Allah, and they miss the blessings, and they miss the opportunity to see the kingdom right. of God established on earth. That's right. Because the hypocrites are blind. That's right. Because the hypocrites want to deceive the righteous of Almighty God Allah. That's right. They are not content or happy with seeing righteous believers right. on their way to God. That's right. But they, like Iblis, they, like Shaitan, they, like Satan, they, like the devil, stand in the pathway of the progress of the Muslims and the nation of Islam. So we, today, have an opportunity not to fail in our duty. And our duty is to worship the one God alone. Right. But the Holy Quran says that the people begin to murmur, listen to this, right. and act in disobedience and act in disarray because if you mention the name Allah alone, they get afraid. Why? Because they can use the servant of God as an excuse to disobey the maker. So they say, well, if it wasn't for the servant of God, he said do such and such, or he guided me to do this. Is that right? But Allah opened a way in the Holy Quran, the revelation of this precious scripture over 1400 years ago, so that today we could not make one mistake. Yes, ma'am. Read in the name of thy Lord who creates. Read, and thy Lord is most generous. Who creates from a clot. Is that right? Yes. Only one man or one woman is made from a clot? Or all of us are made from the same biological union of the seed of life. Is that right? Yes. So every single one of us must now take hold to the responsibilities of our duties that we have neglected, whether we are Christians, Muslim, Jewish, or whatever faith that you may adhere to, and stop driving our servants into positions that they have not required of us, and then blame them when things go wrong. When something goes wrong, you have nothing but to blame yourself. Anything of good, teaches the Holy Quran, is from Allah. But anything that is in error, in deviation, is from ourselves. So we oftentimes want to make excuse. 
well, a brother minister said so and so, and brother minister uh, told me to do such and such, and then you come back and you tell that lie right. to offend a true believer. Right. And then that true believer has no defense because he can't go like you, perhaps directly to the source, pick up a phone or write a secretary or call a secretary and complain to them about their suffering because you have hid the light of Almighty God Allah. My subject for this afternoon was to be a continuation of our subject from Friday evening. The raising of the question, do you want your freedom? And I remembered saying that most of us would say unequivocally what? Yes. yes. But are we willing to pay the price? Do we know the steps to take to guarantee and to maintain that freedom once it is achieved? But if we continue along the line that some of us are going, being neglectful of our duty to guide the people to who? Me? To Minister Farquhar? To Minister Wazir, to Minister Charles, to Sister so and so, or so and so, and so and so, and so and so, until you make all these demigods. But it is to guide us directly to Almighty God Allah, and there you will have and gain your freedom. Freedom of worship. Freedom of prayer, freedom to do what it is that is in your own nature to do. Not that someone has to teach you, but someone does have to guide us upon the path of that straight path to Almighty God. It actually was not my intention to begin directly as I did. But Allah is the best knower. Because until we can begin to take the cobwebs off of our eyes and remove the rust from the rusty locks of our brain cells so that we can begin to be human again, human beings showing and expressing love, acting in harmony and in peace right. with one another. Right. If our freedom were declared tomorrow and we were given a state or a territory of our own in this country or elsewhere, right. we would make the same hell that our open That's enemy, right. the devil, has made for us. For more than 60 years, exactly 62 to be exact, a Savior has come to you and I. That's right. And every time we look for that Savior, we keep thinking sky high <laughs> up in space. Is that right? And we think that space is going to answer us. That's right. Well, actually, space is going to act, <laughs> answer us because there are objects out in space that are moving, targeting planet Earth. Yes, ma'am. We've got all kinds of elements out there. That's right. If we were to investigate That's astronomy right. and discover what is going on. <laughs> But Allah said that he allows an enemy, one who is about to be destroyed, to peep That's right. into the marvels yeah. of the divine creation. Yes, but we notice that ever since 1987 and really 1969, when they began the program of trying to colonize the moon, 
They have been disturbing the atmosphere. Is that right? They have been creating havoc, both in our universe and here on this planet. So many of the problems that we are now suffering are not only for their selfish aggrandizement of material power and capitalist gains. It is not only that they have robbed us of our ability to stand up for ourselves, but they are contributing to the pollution of our air. They are contributing to the pollution of our streams that are killing our fish. They are contributing to the killing and mutilation of cattle. They are popping hormones in our cattle and we're buying that stinky, nasty food to feed our children. And we expect that they're go going to stay off of drugs. We expect that they're going to stop buying guns to shoot one another and shoot you and me. We expect and we say, oh, what has gone wrong? And what do we want to do? You want to keep putting the blame on the white man. Why cannot we continue along this line? Because a savior has come. And he has pointed out the enemy. And he has given us a program that if we would put it into practice, would eliminate all the problems that we're having today. us two beautiful books, How to Eat to Live, book one and two. And he gave us the proper diet, the proper cleansing. Why? He knew that this devil was going to be fighting us with all kinds of covert and, and hidden ways of trying to snuff out our life. He is injecting and spraying chemicals in the atmosphere. Some I don't know about this. Some honky movie star <laughs> dropped over dead somewhere, spraying pesticide, is that right? In his garden. Snuffed him out. So this devil is so smart. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we will never know the depths of Satan. And that he is his aim, please understand, his aim is to destroy us as it was on the island of Patmos, where it all began. He selected, Yaqub did, one of our own. But we've got to understand the wisdom in that. He went to work on the weaker part of the black man. And in going to work on the weaker part of the black man, he ordained a plan of birth control so that he could ultimately produce an enemy that would be an opponent of you and I and of the God Almighty. But God allowed it to happen. Why? So that we could take a look at what was lying dormant in ourselves. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, this is why we do the freaky, crazy things that we do, because that germ is still lying dormant inside of us. So the more that he can use a live devil to keep throwing flames at us, the weaker and weaker that weak germ inside of us will become. Until we flush it out of our system and say, never again, never again. for us, brothers and sisters, to be free. I'm just going to tell it to you like it is. All of us, and quickly, have to return to the source of the wisdom and the power and the majesty of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He came as the one to bound up the wounds of our affliction. And we have not shown grace or thankfulness That's to right. Almighty God Allah. Right. We are not showing thankfulness that we are still here and not up under the ground. By now, we should be part of the rubble because the time that was given to the devils to rule was up in 1914. So you count the years and see how God's grace 
is just continuing to give us more time and a little more time and a little more time. But I've got to tell you this afternoon that there are things that are going on in outer space that may very well collide with this planet. And there are things that are going on in outer space that the scientists of this world, of the white American United States government, are aware of, and that's why they keep sending up their shovels. That's why they keep probing up there. What did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say? That ultimately their goal is to go to war. With whom? The one who came to deliver us. He came to go to war with us, to destroy us if he could, and knowing that his time was limited and that he had but a short time to live, he's making now every preparation to take as many of us down with him as he can. We've got to wake up, brothers and sisters, going into politics, going into the direction of trying to make some kind of an appeasement with our open enemy is over. Bush is an agent of the most diabolical character that we have ever had or seen in the office of presidency of any country on the face of the planet Earth. He was trained as the head of the CIA. Is that right? And he worked some of the most notorious schemes during the time of uh, the death of President Kennedy. Is that right? During the time of the assassination of Malcolm X. During the time of the assassination of Martin Luther King. Is that right? During this period of the 60s, and look at the number, six. He was working on the number of the beast. Yes. And the devils know their number and their tongue. That's right. But they don't want you to listen to Elijah Muhammad, to right. Minister Louis Farrakhan, to anybody that's talking that black Islam. creation of God himself. Look at it from a genetic point of view. How long can white people stay in the sun without burning or blistering <laughs> or blowing up? <laughs> scientific investigation that the planet Earth was a hot molten mass, is that right? Yeah. That if there was a big bang, there was an explosion and an extension of energy that is constantly expanding in our universe, is that right? Yeah. And ultimately atoms were created out of the atoms of hydrogen, is that right? Yeah. And then later added on to the other components of the elements that make up the atomic structure of our Earth and our universe until it ultimately picked up a cycle of revolving in our universe around the sun right at the exact measurement that made it possible ultimately for water to be produced. And then when water was produced, then man came into being. Is that right? Now, what kind of man could live in temperatures of that intensity. Only a man who had enough melanin to protect himself, is that right, from the heat of that time. And when you look at the belt where the ancient civilizations were, they're along the equator, is that right? Along the tropical belt. And you don't find any sign of any white man ever there. Wherever you have to look for the white man, you've got to look in the in the agency. Is that right? You've got to go tapping on those islands out there, those Greek islands. Go take a vacation, sail out on the islands, pop up on Patmos, find those little caves, start doing some digging. You might find some needles that will nurse you. Oh, white 
thing that we see causing all this trouble. He is a scientist, okay? And he trains his people in an educational system to keep us blind, deaf, and dumb so that he can become and remain the dominant ruler. That is his nature. And guess what? The black man and some of the prophets even aided them in their growth so that they could dominate us. Why? To put more and more fire on that which needed to be purified so that it could ultimately evolve into perfection. So we have to take the fire and we've got to be patient enough to rely upon not ourselves, but rely upon the power of Almighty God, Allah Himself, before this thing is over with. But we can't rely upon Him just with emotion or our thought or what we think, okay? We have got to be right and exact, right and exact. And we must follow the program of the Honorable um, Elijah Muhammad, the Muslim program, ones and beliefs. Have we forgotten it? What is the first part of the want? We want freedom, a full and complete freedom. Is that right? Then it goes on to equality. Is that right? And then what? Justice. Is that right? And then what? That we cannot live with our slave masters in peace and have given our life and our blood and our suffering for over 400 years in servitude, slavery. We demand a state or some states of our own, either on this continent or elsewhere. Is that right? That's where we are. to 
its root. When you take it to its root, then you will not be confused. So where is this war going in Europe? What did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say? World War III. That's what it said on Times Magazine. World War III. And then the question comes up, will it still happen? Even though so-called euphoria of the Berlin Wall breaking down, the communist world breaking up, right? Central Asian republics now no longer under the domination of Marxism, etc., etc. But revolution is breaking out all over and the 18th surah of the Holy Quran says that we will build a wall for a while and then at the proper time that wall will be broken and then hell will be exposed to view and we will call the tribes of God and Magog to come down from the northern parts of the world and they will make a slaughter. over a hundred thousand, a hundred ten million of an oriental army. And this oriental army will march through the river Euphrates, is that right? Where is Bush and where is the military command now? They've got troops again. Where? In Kuwait, near, well, Kuwait, that's right. That's right. And they're doing some fancy maneuvering, see? Daring. Saddam Hussein. We're going to get you this time. We're going to get you this time. But how do they know that what's up will not come down? Because all of the old centers of the old world order, of the old ancient civilizations, are being stirred. You see? Ancient Babylon, right? Ancient Chaldea, ancient Sumeria. This was the land of the black man before this, hmm, all right, this civilization that has come to take its place. The, the Caucasian Arabic Muslims. This is no offense, but why do they have that little bit of resentment to us. Why do they have that little bit of racism or racism? Why? Because they are a part of the problem in the East. They are part of the people that went back into the Holy Land. And when they went back into the Holy Land at in them days, <laughs> there was only black people, okay? So because our hearts are so good and we didn't recognize the devil, <laughs> we started hiding him in our home. Oh, oh how terrible. But the children, look what the children did. The children started picking up stones, oh my God, and started throwing them at this thing. They had never seen anything. doing today? Picking up stones, huh? picking up metal, steel pipes, anything. See, history repeats itself. And that branch of the Caucasian race that did not go into Europe, all right, went into the Caucasus Mountains and settled in all these little places where we hear Karakastan, okay, Tajikistan, okay, the central republics of Russia, is that right? Where we find millions and millions of Muslims. Isn't it amazing to see these white Muslims on the television in Bosnia and suffering and Croatia and all of those places with strange names, Croatia, like cro magna Man, all of those places where the caves and hillsides of Europe, all right, where they were lodged. And then because of the grace of Allah, Muhammad came to try to give a final warning to the members of the white race. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that when he made pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca, and he did his circumambulations around the Kaaba, and that when he went to kiss the black stone, 
that he said he really felt cheap and a little shy to kiss the black stone because he knew what the little black stone represented. Little black stone represented little black Jesus. into eminence. They cannot take back. Is that right? Because they want us to come under their legal schools. They want us to come under the four legal schools of the Islamic world. Is that right? To come under the control of Mecca. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Mecca itself and Arabia itself will be cleansed of the white race. It does not mean that there will be a violent attack against them. But by their very nature, what have they done? They have allied themselves with the Western powers, right? Showing that they don't believe in Allah, they believe in America's dollars and commerce and exchange and trade. Is that right? So we don't mind if you send in your soldiers over here because actually we are scared to death because Khomeini started something in 1979 that's about ready to sweep over the entire Islamic world that they call Islamic fundamentalists. Is that right? But they call them not fundamentalists, they call them the militants. Now let's go back into a little history, all right? The Shia branch of the Islamic world were the founders of the highest educational system that the Islamic world has ever had. Did you know that it was under the Fatimid dynasty, Fatima being the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad that established their rule in Egypt, in Cairo. And it was under the Fatimid dynasty that they established the great and oldest university in the world, Al Azhar University. And during the time of its um, origin, did you know? that the curriculum at Al Azhar University at that time was more open for the study of the high sciences of mathematics, more open to the exploration and the sciences of metaphysics, was a more open in their curriculum to allow women to come and participate in the educational process. But when the Sunni branch of Islam came into power, they put a stop to that and confined the curriculum to reading Quran, to the recitation of the holy book, to certain uh, uh, fundamental practices and studies of philosophy and mathematics. And women were barred from studying at Al Azhar University until in the 1960s. It was only then. Now there is a prophecy, brothers and sisters, that we're going to talk about. It says that Islam, after rising majestically under Muhammad and the companions and the immediate period thereafter, that it would have a setback. Is that right? A setback of approximately 1,000 years. So that means that approximately in three centuries, Islam, or I should say the adherents of Islam betrayed their prophet. But he knew that it was coming. And so from that point on, the center of education in the Islamic world went to Egypt. That is not an accident. Egypt today 
is still the center of training for the doctors and the lawyers and the teachers that are sent throughout the Islamic world, into the Emirates, into Saudi Arabia. The majority of the scholars and the highly trained ones come from Al-Azhar University. The former temporary president of Afghanistan, until they had the election and chose the present president, El Professor Subh Katella uh, Mujadila, he was trained out of Al-Azhar University. The point being that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Al-Azhar University was a sign of something. What is it a sign of? Look, the name of a woman, Fatima, became a part of the domination of the Fatimid dynasty who were under the Shia influence or the Shia religion. Is that right? Part of the religion. 1,000 years from the day that they had their first class was not in the university but in the mosque. And the mosque was called the Mosque of Al Azhar, the resplendent light. And 1,000 years from the day that they opened their first class in the Mosque of Al Azhar in Cairo, Egypt which was in the year 975 A.D. Add 1,000 and where do we come? 1975, is that right? And what happened in the West in 1975? The departure of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is that right? And it was a sign of the future world that would be set up under the sign of the Messiah, the millennium, the 1,000 year reign of Christ. So out of one branch, listen now, of Muhammad's family of 1,400 years ago, it was predicted according to his sayings, to his companions, that one would be born along the line of time who would fulfill a great prophecy that he would bring justice in the land where there was no justice, that he would bring equality into the land and freedom, and that he would fill the earth with the abundance of God's spirit, and that wealth would come forth to all those who had been rejected and despised. Is that right? That's right? And that one, according to the Islamic jurisprudence, is called the hidden Imam. And he is also referred to as the Mahdi. Many have their thoughts about who the Mahdi is. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to make a distinction between who you think Mahdi is and who the Mahdi is. He said, the Mahdi came into the wilderness of North America by himself. And his name, Master Wallace Farrar Muhammad. And Master Wallace Farrar Muhammad is not asleep. He's not even hiding. And he most certainly is not dead. Now, Now we're going to get into a little bit of controversy. Is that all right? Yes, we like controversy. Yes, Not gossip, <laughs> but controversy. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that this Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi that the world has been looking for, was fulfilled in his coming. And that he was the fulfillment when you read Our Savior Has Arrived by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that he was the fulfillment of that part of the Sunnah of Muhammad that one would come from his family. Yes. And you have to trace his bloodline through the woman, through his mother. Is that right? So there's a big secret that is given in the Holy Quran. 
within the realm of the domestic life of Muhammad. And this big secret was dropped and the scholars to this day, with the exception of one, was never able to reveal or uncover what the significance of the secret was. Why? The secret was coded. The secret is coded in a mathematical language. And once we understand what the mathematical language is, it's like operating on a safe within which is a treasure. Is that right? right. So if we know the combination of numbers and letters, is that right? And turn it a little to the right, and then a little bit to the left. Is that right? Yes. And then maybe a little bit again to the right or to the left. Right. One moment is an amazing moment. Yes. We open up the treasure house, yes. and the treasure is theirs. Right. And this metaphor, or this thought, was put to us upon the coming of Master Farad Muhammad. And he gave us a very simple assignment. A little book with his signature on it. The only testimony in reality that we have that he is who he said he wants and who the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says he is and who Minister Farrakhan represents to you and I. This code was put in a mystical number that is mentioned in one place in the Holy Quran only. It's mentioned in the 74th Surah, verse 30. And it is the number 19. Now, by the help of Almighty God Allah, I may share with you a bit of what I believe is something that is very special that Allah is beginning to show us in connection to the coming of the Mahdi, the way that he came into the country in 1930, how he came back and forth for approximately 20 years before he made himself known, how he raised the Honorable Elijah Muhammad on a certain timetable, how then he sent the angels, listen carefully, to deliver him, to take him out of a death plot that was planned by the enemies, and why and how this code lets us know how close the time is that we may see something of him again. It's tied up with this mathematical code. But this mathematical code, according to Bible and Quran, was only taught to a certain percentage or a certain elect not to make you or us better than anyone else, but according to the prophecy and the, of the revelation of the Bible, it speaks of God choosing a certain number of converts. Is that right? Yes, and this number of converts is 144,000. Is that right? Yes, they were sealed in their heads with the name of their father. And they each had harps, is that right? Yes, and they played a certain tune. And the words of this song was only known to the 144,000, is that right? Yes, so when Master Farad Muhammad came into the wilderness of North America, he came looking for the lost sheep right, right. in the house of Israel. And they were not Jews, right. okay? Jews and the true Israelites is two different things, right. Right? That's right? The Jews are a part of the branch of the Caucasian race right. that was grafted along with their other Caucasian brothers on the island of Patmos where John the Revelator saw these horrible things. Right. He saw the rule and domination of a demonic race right. that was going to come up out of the Aegean Sea, is that right? Yes, and we know that from the Aegean Sea that the civilizations of ancient Greece and then Rome, is that right? right. The rest of the Caucasians, that they built their empire off of war, 
and offer contests against each other. Is that right? Yes, and eventually came what we call the Middle Ages. And during this Middle Ages, they had a very dark period. And the only light that gave life during that particular period that brought about the Renaissance was the light that was in Spain. Is that right? That's right. In the universities where Islam and the Moors, black people, That's right. from African descent. Is right. that right? right. That's right. Look, Fatima, Africa, Cairo, Egypt. They had the knowledge, they had the wisdom, they had trained already, and they knew how to establish the rule. And there was no uh, fighting and persecution against the Jews, the Sephardic Jews, who also were expelled at the same time that the Muslims were expelled under the coalition and alliance of the Christians. Is that right? right. Under the Pope. So once the Arabs were expelled, they, they put a check on the movement of the European race outside of the confines of Europe. But then after they were expelled and the Sephardic Jews, or the Jews that were expelled, went to live among the Muslims for the second time. Do you see this? And they adopted Islamic culture. So many of them learned not only to speak the Hebrew language, but they also learned the Arabic language. And they are the ones that picked up what we call the more swarthy color from their blonde hair, blue eyed, uh, what is it, Yaganes? <laughs> no, there's another Jew. <laughs> and so many of them complain that they feel racism and they're Jews, supposedly from the same branch of people. So many of them are still today settled in Yemen, in the south of Arabia, and there was never any fighting or persecution between the Muslims and the Jews. But what caused the persecution was the establishment of Israel, which was a political scheme of Zionism that was put forth to the United Nations and first to the Belfort Agreement after World War I, is that right? And they de decided to divide the spoils among the enemies, is that right? They're the enemies. They're enemies even to each other. So they carved up and then plotted to send settlers in of Jews into Palestinian lands. And they were the first terrorists. So when one retaliate for taking their land and their country and their freedom away, can you believe it? They are calling the Palestinians and those who are aligned with helping them to fight for their homeland terrorists and making you and I believe it. So the propaganda that is used by the devil to keep us divided is constantly destroying us day after day after day. So now, in breaking down this history, after the Arabs were exposed, after the Jews were exposed, the needs some Yes. I think our brother is going to be all right. The Europeans remained to fulfill another destiny. And that part of their destiny was to expand westward. Is that right? That's right but with the pretense that they were looking for a way to the east. Is that right? But according to some of the true history of Christopher Columbus, who is being celebrated, right, this year as a discoverer of America for white people, right? Sure. That it is said that he knew exactly where he was going. But that the pretense was that he was looking for an outlet 
to India. So when he arrived here, he found Indians that he called Indians. But we must not really call them Indians because it's a degradation. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that they are part of the original nation. That they are part of the black nation. And to prove it, we have a lesson. Student enrollment. When we come to enroll in the studies of Islam under the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we must answer 10 questions and answers. And one of these 10 questions and answers gives us the population of the original nation in the wilderness of North America. And that population of the original nation is 17 million plus 2 million Indians who are also original, making 19 million. So we have yet, we have not yet fulfilled this joining together of our Native American members of the original nation. And there are many reasons for this that we will not go into, you know, at the present moment. But let it suffice to say that at one time we will be forced to join in an alliance for survival. And just as it was in the time of slavery, many of the Indians or the Native Americans, we took refuge on their reservation so that 99 and one half percent of us as mixed with Native American or Indian blood. Is that right? Some of us went down into the Everglades and there we were with the Seminoles, right? Some of us went on the Trail of Tears from Georgia and became part of the Cherokee Nation. Some of us went up into North Carolina and South Carolina, down into Louisiana, became members of the Blackfoot tribe. And then some of us crossed over the border into Canada and became part of the Mohawk and the Dina Nation. All of this is a sign that we are part and parcel of each other and we can't get away from it. But we do have a mark of distinction. Rebelliousness. The Native American was exiled according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because he broke the rule of where we began in this lecture. Worshipping the one God. And he set up Idols, is that right? And pretty soon, as you have in Hinduism, not the Vedas or the Brahmans, the high caste, the people who study the metaphysical side of their religion, you have villages and places throughout India, throughout Asia, throughout Malaysia, or wherever that the Hinduism and in parts where Buddhism is practiced, they carve out idols, is that right? And that is an affront to God. So. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the Hindu was so dangerous in his fanaticism that if you were to see, brother, a Hindu and a Christian walking together, you would have to destroy the Hindu first. Because he is more poisonous and he has been an enemy for 35,000 years. That's all in student enrollment. So look, brothers and sisters, what you are missing by not coming and joining the nation of Islam. We get all the degrees of the universe, the whole circle of the supreme wisdom, 360 degrees. And if you come into the nation of Islam, you will regain your dignity, regain your pride, your self-respect, how? Because you're going to get a full knowledge of yourself which leads ultimately to a full and complete freedom to exercise your rights as a human being equal with every other human being on the planet Earth. Now, this year, the 500th anniversary of this celebration that's coming up October 12, right? Oh, 500 years. Here's another part of the world that was dominated by the Spanish, and they sent the Jesuit priests 
and they sent the Pope of Rome and Catholicism, and they had a very well laid out plan. Right. If we take the Pope and we make him as God in his place, then we can get these people who are really heathens to bow down and worship the Pope of Rome as God sitting in the place of God, the Most High. Is that right? So the Catholic Pope and the religious people of that time prepared a doctrine. They prepared a doctrine and a tactic by which they would be able to dominate and rule over the masses of people. They were given the knowledge by Moses when they were in their training period in the caves and hillsides of Europe, ultimately it came to that, that they were given a little help. They had to learn how to master the original man. And what was it about the original man that they have been able to master? They know that we are spiritual, not religious people, but spiritual. What does that mean? That means that we have the ability when we are ourselves to be able to perform miraculous things and have gifts that we have the ability to tune in and send our thoughts and receive thoughts. Is that right? And that we can move out and perform acts of healing. It's easy to the black man and the black woman. It's easy to look into the future and say, I see such and such is going to happen and such and such is going to happen over there. That's not taught. That's in the very nature of the black man and woman when he is himself. So the, the white man knew that we had this. So he had to set up an opponent to the very essence of what is in yourself. So he comes along and he brings some more idols. After he goes through Europe and goes to the sacred places where images of Mary and the images of Jesus are known in Europe and in St. Petersburg and Russia to have been the places of worship of the Black Madonna, then they go and they ultimately change the color. Is that right? And start painting it with pink lips and pink cheeks, huh? Right. A little blonde thing hanging yeah. on, <laughs> dangling down on the side and give us a white Jesus and a white uh, a Mary and then come over and say, this is your Jesus and God, see? And then he comes looking just like the picture and the image of his little white Jesus and white Mary, right? So they say, oh, well, then you must be the representatives, then you must be the gods too, see? So we gave up our power. And then to the people of the Hispanic or Mexico, Central America, Mesoamerica, South America, and the Caribbean, they did exactly the same thing. In fact, Catholicism is the dominant stranglehold on the people of Central America and South America. And there will come a time when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that they will be cleansed out of that area. They will be cleansed out of Asia, which you can see, they're on their way out of Asia. They're not in Asia anymore, is that right? They're on their way out. And so they have no place to go, but where? Back to Europe, you see? So then when America is forced to have to send her troops into, Amer or into Europe, you see? Then he said that Europe would become a graveyard. Right. He said it would become a graveyard, and when the troops who would gain a short-lived victory, they would be so weakened from the battle, but when they would come back, they would find a change in America, if we do the right thing. That change is that we would ultimately find ourselves again, learn to love ourselves again, get back into the power of ourselves again. Is that right? And then learn to love each other and come together in unity regardless to our religious 
our thinking or our differences on political grounds. We need to put all that aside because those are the ways and the devices of Satan to keep us divided. From now on, Muslim, you're a Christian. From now on, Christian, you're a Muslim. And shut the devil up. So the importance of us first uniting with self is the key. Then with dignity and respect, we can charter away with our Native American brothers and sisters. See? Then we can charter away with our Mexican and Chicano and Puerto Rican brothers and sisters, our Hispanic brothers and sisters that are also suffering from the same diseases and the same uh, technology that has been practiced by this devil. So why are we talking so strongly about the unification of black and Indian or Native American and Hispanic today? Because we have come to the 500th anniversary. And not only that, we are working on the mathematical code. And this mathematical code is going to begin to unlock and reveal things to us individually, right. apart from, in, and independent from, a teacher or a guide, etc. Because when things get very, very rough, as they will be, and within, I would say, and I'll give you in my closing remarks why, within the next seven months, we have some very strong right. confrontations that are coming up. Right. And we have no choice but then to unite and to join on to those who are in the struggle, whether they be black or red or yellow or brown or perhaps even a fragment of whites. I don't know their future. I'm not concerned. But they know what they have to do That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> to get in the door because when Israel went out under the command of Moses, a fragment or a, a, a group of the Israelites went out, not Israelites, of the Egyptians, is that right? right. Went out with them. Right. So what they have to do to get that privilege, I don't know. But the uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Master Farad Muhammad said that any good that any white person would do will merit its award. And we have been given instructions that there are approximately three million Muslim sons or white persons in this country who have been under a certain training and that that training will help to qualify them to be able to have a little grace period, okay? The sign of Noah, the sign of, excuse me, Jonah. Uh, when Jonah came, the punishment or the chastisement was stayed for maybe about a century or so. If America can be alerted in time enough and the right people in the right positions in the government know the proper thing that they have to do, then and only then, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, there may be a stay of the execution. So. He also said that Master Farad Muhammad had the power to take this country without striking a match. So that means that we will be given a certain knowledge as we evolve. A certain knowledge that will make us strategically able to wrap the white man and his evil technology around our finger. That's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. And we will be able to demand and receive that which was taken from us over 400 years ago. So the working of this mathematical code is what I want to end on. May I? Now, remember the sign of Al-Azhar University? 1,000 years to the exact time of 1975 and the messenger of Allah departs and he departs telling us even though it appeared that he was dead I know you went to a funeral some of you heard it on the news I don't give two hill of beans for what you heard on the news or what the medical reports may show Master Farrar Muhammad has the ability 
to reverse dying and dead cells. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that when a person is pronounced dead, that if he, Allah, can get to that person within 24 or 48 hours, that he can revive that person. So he taught us in how to eat to live, that he had the ability to regenerate the cells of the body and bring us back again to the age of 16. Is that right? Do we believe in a God or a spook? You see? Do we know that God is real? Or do we think that he is invisible? He has powers that he works on the invisible side. <laughs> but he is made of the same material out of which the universe itself is generated. All right? And I must say this, brothers, we must learn to love, respect, and honor our women. Because if you understand the proximity and the beautiful connection that the female woman power has to God. And then when you realize that when you mistreat her, you're cutting off your life source to God. That if you mistreat her and beat her and cause her to live in an environment whereby that she's going to create for you out of the womb of life a monster instead of a God. Then we know that we are going to have to understand the beauty of the black people. Right. Go back to the universe. Yes, black out white, and you have a womb. Yes, Is that right? right? And it is a black womb. Is that right? right? And when God, according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, self-created himself out of that dark womb of space. He said whatever material there was in the darkness of space was sufficient for him to generate and recreate or create himself out of the essence of the material that was in the darkness. All right? Then when he studied himself after he was self-created, he saw the woman. And the first act of his creation outside of himself was the woman oh, yeah. who acted as a reflection and a mirror of himself as the second self of God. Is that right? And then he and she and she and he recreated and generated and produced everything that we see in this universe. How do we know? The planets are what? She. The moon, she. How do we know the moon is she? Because we have the history to prove it. In the flag of Islam, we mean freedom, justice, and equality. What do we have? We have the emblem of the sun and the moon and the star. Is that right? And the moon, history, we were given. And the sun, history, we were given. And the star, history, we were given. Way right before we were embattled over here with these stripes like prisoners in the, in the land of America. What is that history? That's 66 trillion years ago, a scientist from among the black nation had a predetermined idea that he wanted all the people to speak the same language. Is that right? And so the other scientists disagreed with him but because his idea dominated. He was able to set into the molten core of the earth a certain type of dynamite that blasted off a part of our earth and set it up as a satellite called the moon. And this satellite of the moon origin is from where? Does she have a first name? Mother Earth. is called the moon looking down on you bad fellas. See? All right? 
And then we've got the sign of our monthly, the menstrual cycle, which is a sign of once every 21 to 28 days. Is that right? And before the moon was ejected and went up 12 miles high, according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the earth fell into its present pocket or cycle around the sun, dropping 36,000 miles. He said that we were working on the number 13, not on the base of 12. Right. Gotta understand that. Right. What is the proof? He said there were 13 tribes and one got lost. Is that right? And that was the platform out of which Israel and the 12 tribes was actually rooted. It's rooted in the 12 major scientists who kept a secret. Back to that secret. For trillions and trillions of years until one was born from the womb of a woman. Born from the womb of a mother to wake us up. Who has power over the universe. Who has power over the atmosphere. Who has power over the sun. Who has power over the moon. Who has power over the stars. Why? To let you know that this was you before you were made a slave. This is you. The essence of you is reflected in him. And he's reflecting his essence back to you. So that you can get a picture of what God looks like. What God talks like. What God walks like. What is the sign that we were on number 13? We look to the heavens. How many times in one solar year? Does the moon make her revolution around the earth? Thirteen times. Is that right? According to the ancient Egyptians, according to the ancient Maya Olmec culture of Mexico and Mesoamerica, they were working on a system of 13 constellations, not 12. Something is missing. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said there's a missing note in music. And a scientist, a musician, a master named Mr. Carrillo in Mexico discovered what they call the 13th note. All right. He reached beyond the 12 chromatic scale in music and hit back again on the number 13. Yeah. What is this telling Jeez. us? Come on, wake up. Jeez. He told us very little about that history. He said that tribe got lost. So it's very clear if they got lost that they were destroyed by some kind of devastation, some kind of cataclysmic event. And we're close to another cataclysmic event that this 66 trillion year old history is pointing to. Finally, may I share this information with you? In the same period of time, when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad departed, a scientist born in Tanta, Egypt, who is now deceased. He died by murder. He was killed. And I'm speaking of the late Dr. Rashad Khalifa. Right, right. In 1975, I was in Cairo, Egypt, and I was recording a musical symphonic score based on one of my own original compositions, based on the title of the Quran 110th surah called El Nasr, the Help, when Allah's help and victory comes and thou seest the people entering into the religion of Islam in companies, celebrate the praise of my Lord. Dr. Rashad Khalifa was in the neighboring country of Libya, and he was contracted there as a teacher under the Libyan government, under Muammar Gaddafi. And he was performing, along with the other teachers and staff of the school, calisthenics, and as was their custom, 
their custom, they would listen to the radio broadcast from one of the most popular imams coming out of Cairo, Egypt. And he began to speak about the number of times that you hear the name Rahman, or how many times you hear the name Rahim in the Holy Quran. And it was at that particular point when he felt the idea and the thought that what if he were to take the Quran and put it into the computer. And so doing, he discovered that, first of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim contains 19 letters. And from that study that he did, he emerged with a prophetic sign that was cast, I would say, against his Arab brothers and colleagues of the Islamic world. And for that reason, it is suspicion. I didn't say it has been proven. It has been dis uh, suspicion that an order, which is called a fatwa, was ordered from among highly placed persons in Arabia because he stated that the old world of Islam, the old hypocritical way that Islam under the orthodox way has been carrying out Islamic business is an affront to God. And he was bold enough and he knew that he would have to pay with his life. But it was in that instance and in that exact year when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad departed in preparation for what is getting ready to become known, that this mathematical code of the 19 was revealed. Shortly thereafter, I had never met Dr. Rashad Khalifa until January of 1980. And I met him because I had heard that someone was working on the mathematical code of the Holy Quran. And we know that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, Islam is mathematics. Right. Mathematics is Islam. Right. Is that right? That's right? So my children and I had the opportunity to meet him exactly at the time of the changeover of the old Arab calendar of 1400 years from the time of Prophet Muhammad to the first year of the 15,000th year or the 15,000th year of the Hijra, that is, since the flight. This is very, very important. I pray a lot that I can explain it clearly to you. During the flight, now we know the flight meant that he was under attack. Is that right? Yes, right. Yeah. <clears throat> that Muhammad had to flee for his life. Is that right? That's right. That's right? And he had to flee for his life with his companions. And he left one man behind to take care of the business that he was not able to take care of. And that man he left in his bed was Ali. Right. Is that right? That's right? And he left the charge to Ali to take care of all his debts or and his family and the believers, etc., etc., etc. Now, I learned from Dr. Rashad Khalifa that the song and the composition that I had recorded in Cairo, Egypt in 1975, and it happened to be the same month of the same year that I was recording this music when he was in Libya, though I had never heard of him nor met him until 1980, he told me, he said, did you know? He said that that surah is the last chapter that was revealed in completion, a whole chapter that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad before his demise. I said, that part, yes. He said, did you know that not only the Bismillah Rahman Rahim contains the 19 letters, but the very first verse contains 19 letters? I said, no. Then he said, did you know that all of the words of that verse 
are exactly 19 words. And I said, no, I didn't. He said, what do you think that the number 19 represents? And at that time, he was early to in his research. So I said, I'm really not sure. I said, the only thing I can think of at this moment is that the number that comes immediately after it is 20. <laughs> <laughs> so, I departed and we had no more contact until approximately three years, approximately three years later. And during that process of time, a seed had been dropped. And knowing that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that after him, that there would come a certain class of people that would be following him up, that would verify his work, verify his mission and discover whether or not we were really true believers or not. Is that right? And he said that once these kind of scientists reveal themselves, they can be killed. Because they are human. They are flesh and blood. So the price that Dr. Khalifa paid was the price of a martyr in Islam. And he boldly, from among their own people, warned Mecca that the Arabs would be severely chastised. And that occurred, his assassination occurred on January 31st, the same month that I met him, the same month that he passed. Ten years later, in the same month or a few days after the killing of our brother, Oliver Beasley, here in Los Angeles. It was the same year that Nelson Mandela was released from prison after 27 years. And I'm noting that all of these sequential events of prophetic significance are occurring on this western side of the United States of America. Because Dr. Rashad Khalifa did his studies in the state of Arizona. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that when these type of people come among us, he said they will be working under various disguises. Some of them will be under the title of physicians, they could be medical personnel. They could be doing a number of, of, of jobs. And he told me, when we met him, that he was so excited to know that we were the family of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And that back in Egypt and in Africa, where his father was the head over a large body of Sufi Muslims, that run from North Africa all the way into the Emirates on the Saudi Arabian Peninsula, that he heard his name while he was still in Egypt before he ever came to the United States. And he said that since he was a young man, gaining his degrees as he became a PhD, a state chemist for the state of Arizona, that he would tell the other members of the Arab world to leave the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam alone. Because God had them on a certain course. And one day, without going too much longer on this point, he made a tape in 1986. And in this tape, he states, that he believes that Minister Louis Farrakhan will be the one that will lead us into the establishment of the New World Kingdom of Islam on Earth. And he said that the nation of Islam will become the nucleus of that new 
world order. So sometimes, brothers and sisters, when we come into new knowledge, we don't know who we're meeting, we don't know who we're talking to, but we go forward in the pursuit of knowledge in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. And as a result of this number 19, we have grown more and more in seeing the beauty of how the mathematics works in giving us a full and complete knowledge of who we are. And now who the black woman is, brother. The black woman is your Mary. When you turn to the 19th surah, of the Holy Quran, it talks about the mother of Jesus, and it is named Maryam. And from 16th verse to the 34th verse, it speaks about Mary's visitation of a holy one, and that this holy one came to her as a spirit. Listen. But this spirit manifested itself in a well-made man and announced to her that she was going to give birth to a very, very powerful boy. What is that? Okay? So Mary had to take on this great challenge because after she conceived the child, she had to go into hiding. And then after she gave birth to the child, she had to come before the public. And coming before the public caused a scandal and a calumny. Because the people were not operating off of the high spiritual divine laws that brought this all about. They were working on a low base mentality. And they did not know that this woman was giving birth to the one who would become the Messiah and the Savior of the world. So we, the black people, were put under the sign, this is so important, under the sign of Mary, the mother of Jesus and her son, as a sign to the nations of the world. So if the code, the mathematical code of the Holy Quran is a number, and that number is 19, look at this. And the one who made the discovery by the grace of Almighty God, Allah, points to the nation of Islam as the sign for the nations, is that right? To herald in and to bring in a new world government of peace and of righteousness. How? Should we rejoice? How now should we be happy? Because the true Jesus, the true Mary, the true Christ, and the true Messiah turns out to be you and me in America, a nation of 35 million, almost 40 million Jesuses and Marys, and the Messiah has come to life. In my closing, I want to leave us with this thought. There is a film that has been made on one of our brothers, Malcolm X Shabazz. Is that right? Yes. And the enemy wants to take that of Malcolm's life and his disagreement with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to hoodwink us again so that we will end up fighting each other. Well, I believe Malcolm is right. And I'm with Elijah Muhammad. Let me tell you where your protection will come. Say, I seek refuge in Almighty God, Allah. 
And I do not take part in any disagreements that you devils will produce on screen or in theater or in song or in dance or in politics that's going to divide me from my brother. Spike Lee, 
He is being used yeah. by the devil. Yeah. Yeah. And what the devils want is for us to fight each other. But why don't we give him a surprise? Let's do a bit of trick-or-treat on him. And when the movie comes out, boycott it. Didn't they do that to the temptation of Christ? And what did they do? Did they block it out of the movie theaters? Look what they did. The Muslims didn't want Muhammad, the messenger of God, shown in the movies. Is that right? And they didn't go to see it, and they prevailed. And that movie was taken out of the movie houses before too long. Is that right? And when they see that kind of change, that their tricks cannot be used, that they can use a brother against a brother and a sister against a sister, and that we have grown up and that we're learning our lessons, and that we're going to stand up and rank for the truth and nothing but the truth, then they are going to submit and we will wrap them around our finger and we will take back this country and the rule without striking the neck. That he gives us strength and courage to know the time and to know how to act in that time because the devil's time is gone it's out forget it he doesn't exist he's not here god is here god is the master and when you know that you are god and you are God, sister. And that we are God. We all are God, says David in the Psalms. And the children of the Most High. Is that right? So then we will act in consort with God. Is that right? And as he ignites our brain cells so that we start picking up the thought frequencies of our enemy. And do like Jesus was trained to do. When the enemy comes here, you go over that. And when you're going over there, you go over here. You see what I'm saying? And then know that the vision that the minister had aboard the mother's plane. Is that right? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was telling him that this devil was planning a war. Is that right? And in his press conference in 1989 in October, 24 in Washington, D.C. He told them the whole vision and he said, I thought maybe it was in Libya. I thought maybe it could be in the Persian Gulf. That came up, didn't it? 1990. Then what is left, he said? He said, you are planning a war against my people. You sent the drugs and the rifles and the guns. Is that right? Turning us against ourselves and then, all of a sudden, April 29th, L.A. explodes, is that right? And they send in the guards, is that right? And they send in the military and the Marines, right? I mean, like troops all over again, like Desert Storm, right? So he's over here fighting in the devil. He's over here fighting in America, right? So the devil is getting weaker and weaker and weaker, right? But all of a sudden, a miracle. The cricks and the blood say, hey. Is that right? Yes. So we start 
getting in that kind of groove, you know, that's going to burn the devil right on down into hell. That's going to eliminate that kind of opposition to us. And they'll say, mm, 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 my bag of tricks doesn't work anymore. That's absolutely right, Whitey. It's not going to work anymore. I hate white people. I, I really don't hate white people. Because <laughs> all you have to do is substitute white and put the right noun there. And we will be right. Replace white with devil. And everyone hates the devil, including God himself. So, brothers and sisters, in this short period of time that I've had with you, I have something that I want to share in closing. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is creating a family of believers. And he's working so hard and diligently that we're reforming our women faster and faster every day. Because when we come into the knowledge of who we are, the mothers of civilization, we will be able to give life again to the generations to come, that they will be a holy and a righteous people. And we will come out into the neighborhoods if you will receive us and respect us. Yes, and we will start teaching our youth right. in the neighborhoods and the communities and we'll put on our programs That's right. of righteousness. Yes, right. And we will begin to teach from corner to corner and door to door with the backing of our brother FOI. Yes, right. We're going to come out as a family yes, right. and we're going to throw this devil into hell. Yes, right. May I say this with all my heart? We have very little time to do the right thing. We have been given an excess of time to get it together. According to the problem book, a lesson assignment given to us to study by Master Farad Muhammad, he weighs the contents of this certain number of people the 17 million that I mentioned, plus the 2 million Indians, as a cubicle weight or square. By taking the 12, which is the root of the present world order that we're in, multiplying it to itself, it produces 144. Is that right? But now if you cube it, You've got to multiply that 144 by 12 again. Is that right? Yes, and you'll get 1,728 cubic inches in one cubic foot. And it is this one cubic foot, if we can make it righteous, that it will be able to square, we will be able to square and to cube the nations into righteousness all over the world. And in order to do this, we have to make a commitment. We have to make a commitment that we will no longer be devil worshippers. We have to make a commitment that we will no longer dishonor the servants of God when they come in our midst. That we will not make their job so tedious that they can get a wrong score because of our rebelliousness. We have to stop idolizing and, and getting rhetorical and getting emotional and start pulling up our sleeves and go to work. If we are going to make freedom a reality, we are going to have to act like men and women and not boys and girls. So finally, as I close, 
within the next seven months, I mentioned, the kinds of things that we might be cautious of would be that we will have many calamities, number one. And we may have what we will call the blackout of the artificial light that we are using, such as electricity. Why am I saying this? Scientific studies are telling us, as I said in the beginning of this lecture, that there is a study now by NASA tracking down certain kind of beams that are now being picked up from outer space. In 1987, a time which was called, according to a Mexican-American scientist by the name of Mr. Jose Arguelles, I don't know if some of you have heard his name, he initiated prayers and ceremonies around the world called Harmonic Convergence. And he brought about another part or piece of the puzzle. Because for some 30 or, or some odd years, his studies had been on the Maya calendar. And the Maya people of Central and uh, Central America, Mexico and Central America, had, that's right, had the most perfect calendar that is even exhibited, it is at Kitts Peak in Arizona. When you go to study at that observatory in Arizona, you will find that as you enter the door, they have a symbol of the Aztec calendar and say that it was the most accurate calendar, even more accurate than the solar or Gregorian calendar that is being used today. Why? The Gregorian calendar is based on a 12-month cycle. Is that right? Yes, that is not in accord with the alignment of the sun and the moon and the earth rotation. So the Gregorian calendar gives us months with mixed days. Is that right? Yes, 31 days, 30 days, leap year days, right. all right? right? But the lunar calendar, which is in our flag of Islam, and is the only symbol, the moon, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said would ultimately grow from a crescent moon in the western horizon, that it would grow into a full moon. So if it grows into a full moon, that means that we have to study something about the moon, is that right? In relationship to our Earth, in its rotation around the sun. But this scientist studied, and I discovered many years before, I ultimately, can you believe it? I have had contact directly with that particular scholar, that particular scientist, by way of the mathematical code. That's why I know that we're on a track and that we are making links now with the scientists of this world who are giving us the best that they know how. But we were given the perfect science, do you see? So that at the right moment and the right time, we would be able to recognize them and they would be able to recognize us. Is that right? Were those the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in 1974? He said, one day, we will become acquainted with them. And they already know us. Listen to this. The Maya calendar, its precise and accurate methodology, is based on a lunar cycle. The Arabic calendar, the most precise, is based on a lunar calendar. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. The Jewish calendar is adjusted according to the alignment of the sun and the moon and the earth, which occurs every 19 years. Now, the Maya do not count on a decimal system, 1 to 10. They count on a vigesimal system. That is 0 to 19 instead of 0 to 9. All right? Now there is the number 19 again. Who were the three people that were to link up according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and form this new alliance? The black man. Is that right? And here comes 
a black man born out of Nubian parents who discovers the code out of Egypt, the land of our foreparents, that makes a link for us to our people back home, not on a mediocre level, but on a very highly scientific, see, mathematical level. The second people, the Native American Indians, they're named in our lessons, and the number that identifies them in their link with us is 19. Is that right? 17 million after we make this cube, then we add on this 2 million, all right, which includes the Native Americans. Now the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, when he leaves, he goes and leaves a sign in Mexico before his departure. And the 19 is the counting system. And the number 13 that we also know is a powerful, powerful number, we were given the 13th problem that gives us the code, to break the code. So if we all begin operating on a higher frequency hmm, of a mathematical language, is that right? That's how Jesus was taught how to tune in so that he would be at the right spot, at the right time, in the right moment in history. Is that right? Yes, so the 19th surah of the Holy Quran, which is named for Mary, the mother of Jesus, as a sign of our nation being born today, that we represent the true Messiah. This 19th surah was revealed during a period of persecution. It was revealed during a time when Muhammad recommended that some of his followers and members of his family take flight or immigration into another country outside of Saudi Arabia and they went to Africa where they were received by the Negus or the king of Abyssinia, present-day Ethiopia. And they were taken as refuge and refuge in a time of trouble and persecution. So the surah that corresponds to the number 19 and the code is connected with a period when Jesus was trained by the scientists to be able to use his mathematical knowledge in the right way. Is that right? In its proper term. What does that mean? So that he could earn for himself a way out of one condition into a higher condition. Is that right? And earn him what? Good homes and place of refuge and friendship in all walk of life. Is that right? From all people. Allah is offering us the friendship of our people now from all parts of the world. But first, we have to work on our Native American Indians. Next, the Hispanic population, but we must cultivate our relationships, all right? It's not just to say, oh, you're my brother, but we have got to re-educate all the people on the planet Earth. So we've been given a superior method, a language, which is the scientific language of the universe, which is coded in our DNA, which is coded in our genes, which goes back to the origin of God himself, who used measurement and time to self-create himself out of darkness into being. And he uses the woman as a part of the sign to the nations because it is she in her womb that carries the numbers in the cycle of that baby coming to birth. Is that right? That's right? So now, we want to join on and to understand the 19 is a number that comes in the end of the judgment, which separates the people into groups. And as the madness breaks out, there is a group that will be taken away to safety and will be given refuge on lofty grounds, having meadows, and springs. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, through Master Farad Muhammad, has paved the way for our deliverance and for our salvation. But we must now be willing to do the right thing. We must be willing now to review the teachings, the only teachings that are life-giving teachings that were brought to us in the 30s. And these teachings are still standing the test of time. Is that right? And they are proving the Honorable Elijah Muhammad 100,000, 100 million, 100 billion, 100 trillion percent right. Because the nation of Islam is right and exact. So let us 
us now forge ahead for unity. Let us not let the devil gain us back. Whatever slander, whatever persecution, whatever attack that he's going to put on us, let us repel that attack. Let us put on the buckler and the shield of our protection and take refuge in Almighty God, Allah, alone. And we will win the victory. May I say to you that it has been an overwhelming experience for me to speak to you here in Los Angeles, California. Can you believe it? Your city is called Los Angeles. You know what that means. Los Spanish Angels. Can any good come out of Gilead? <laughs> they say out here on the West Coast that everybody does whatever they want to do in any kind of way they want to do it, you know? But why don't we surprise the rest of the country <laughs> and show them that some good comes out of Gilead. That's right. Didn't Minister Lewis Parr come, come out of Los Angeles? Yes. <laughs> the angels came and picked him up. And put him on the track to help us to regain our sanity, our love and our unity. Let us not disappoint ourselves. Let us win the victory. Let us be united. Let us love one another. Let us be brothers and let us be sisters because that will kill the death. Right. Stop the killing. Right. Thank you.